Hey guys, Tech Made Easy, and thank you so much for clicking on our link today. Listen, I want to tell you what I'm going to be doing. I just got my hands on my first lithium ion phosphate power station. Okay, now versus lithium, you get a lot more cycles with a lithium phosphate battery. Okay, so that's going to be a big difference here. I am going to be charging this with a solar panel. It's got five ways you can charge this, by the way. One of them is a solar panel. So we're going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing testing on this. Um, this is a pure sine wave power station, by the way. And you're going to be pleasantly surprised at the price. All right. So let's get going. Let's check this out. I'm not going to unbox it. I'm just going to snap my fingers in a moment. And you're going to see that everything's laid out so we can check it out. You ready? Wow, there it goes with a snap of a finger. Now check this out. It's really not a big unit, okay? So let's go over what's included, all right? You obviously get your power brick to charge this, all right? And it'll get plugged directly into your input down there. Here are the MC4 cables that I'll be using. I'm going to actually charge this with a 100-watt solar panel. Now, the maximum input, by the way, for the solar panel is 60 watts. Um, but they say that you can use up to a 100-watt solar panel because you're never going to get 100 watts with a solar panel. So as you can see, these are the MC4 cables, and they plug directly into that input, the same as your power brick. Okay, plastic, plastic. You also get a cigarette lighter adapter, and again, it's another way to charge this. Now, it's interesting. I don't think I've ever charged anything using a cigarette lighter adapter, so I'll have to figure that one out. And um, to tell you the truth, I just answered my own question. Okay, they give you the cigarette lighter. <laughs> um, so you can actually plug this into your car and plug this in there. So uh, I guess there are other ways to use this. You do get a booklet, which um, not bad. You know, it's got your specs and a couple of things that are gonna be important with something like this. And then you also get a card that says you get a surprise. Please don't hesitate to email us 24 hours a day. So I wonder what the surprise is. Um, so let's take a good close look at this unit and take a look at some specs. All right, let's take a good close look at this and, and we'll land with the port. So on the side, you have a fan um, and that's actually made to kind of ventilate the battery that's in there. I believe on the other side, you get another fan. So I, think, I believe there's two fans here. You get, if we look at it from the top down, you get a nice strong handle. So this doesn't look like it's gonna break anytime soon, okay. Uh, on the bottom, you get some really nice rubber feet, and they also give you a warning. Don't overcharge the internal battery. Please see the instructions, all that good stuff. All right. Um, the back of the unit, by the way, does have a flashlight. All right, along with model number information and stuff right there. Now, the unit needs to be on in order for you to turn the flashlight on. All right, it is an LED flashlight, and we'll figure out how bright that is. All right, let's take a moment and talk about input and output on this unit. All right, let's talk about all these buttons. Number one, you've got one section for input. It's right there, all right? So everything you're going to do is going to be plugged into here for your input to charge this unit, right? So you get number one, you, your, your input is going to be your power brick, obviously, would plug right down into there. And uh, your solar charge cables. Now these are MC4 cables, that's what they're called. And so again, this would plug in here, this would plug into a solar um, panel. You, you want to make sure it's at 100 watts or less, because this, this supports up to 60 watts of input from a solar panel. And if you get a 100 watt panel, in most cases, you're not getting, you know, 60 watts or 70 watts. So they're saying you can use a uh, 60 watt or, I mean, a 100 watt or less solar panel. Um, this has a built-in MPPT uh, charge controller as well. Whenever you're dealing with solar, you normally need a charge controller. But that's built into this, which is really amazing. All right. 
And uh, we'll put some links in the description for a solar panel if you're looking at that. You can also charge this using your car or your RV or whatever. So you plug it into the input, you plug it into your cigarette light adapter, and you can charge it that way, um, which is really, really nice. Um, of course, you have your Type C. Um, you can plug in. This is a 60 watt. This is one of the fastest ways to charge this. There's a 60 watt in or out on the bottom. Okay, you get two Type C's, but one of them is an input and an output. The other one is just an output. All right, so let's talk about outputs, right? Output meaning let's use this battery. Let's plug something into it. So number one, you can plug in using the cigarette light adapter. So, you, so these are outputs, all right? These are um, 12 volt, 10 amp outputs, all right? Um, you get your USB type, uh, your USB type A, all right? These are 3.0, latest and greatest, which is good. You get, uh, type C. So again, this is a 30 watt, this is a 60 watt. So if you use this one, you're going to, you know, basically whatever you're plugging into, it's going to charge faster, which is nice. Um, and you, you also get, you know, two AC outlets. They're pure sine wave. And what that means is the power that comes from this is the cleanest it's going to be. There are different types of units out there that are non-pure sine wave that are a lot cheaper um, because the technology isn't in them to give you the clean power that you need. All right. You do get a nice uh, LCD. I'll turn this on. I did run it um, a little bit uh, last night. I am draining it. They say to drain this initially um, and then fully charge it to condition it. So there's the battery at 47%. It is adjusting and saying that I have 99 hours currently with no load. But as you start plugging things in and turning on the ports, right? These, all of these here, AC will turn this on, USB will turn all these on, DC will turn all these on. And then you get a light, by the way. So if I turn on AC, you'll see it'll say AC and then it'll start adjusting and turning on the inverter, all right? and to turn this on, by the way, you just hold this for a moment and it turns on. To turn these guys on, you just do a one press. All right. Now, the other thing that's really nice, and I'll keep saying it, is this has pass-through technology, which means while you're charging it, you can actually plug devices into it. But they did say that the um, uh, Type-C here, at least I believe on the bottom, isn't going to have that. So while you're charging on this type C. I don't think this type C will have any pass through. All right, but you'll get pass through on USB. Um, you'll get pass through on, on all other parts of this, which is really nice. Um, that's a nice feature that's again, not included in units of this cost. All right, time to do our first test. We do have Brooklyn up there watching as we do our test, just so you'll know if you're familiar with our channel. So the first test is on a 280 watt charger. This is actually a 280 times two. It actually supports up to two batteries. I've got a 10 amp hour battery. That doesn't matter. Don't worry about the battery itself. Okay, but this is 280 watts. This peaks at 300 watts. So we're gonna test it and see if it works. All right, I'm gonna turn the unit on by pressing and holding the power button. Okay. And the battery's practically full. What I wanna do now is turn on the AC outlets here because I'm gonna be plugging it in, AC. So one press and the AC outlets are on. Okay. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take this charger. I wanna plug it in. I don't think anything should happen, but now eh, let's see if it shows a load, actually. All right, so yeah, just for a second, showing low wattage. All right, now, now what we wanna do is we wanna put the battery on and start charging. Okay. It is charging and the battery, the wattage is going up. 194, up, up. Now the fan just went on on this, just so you'll know. 
247, 250. So it is charging and the wattage is varying depending. So we'll keep an eye on that. But as you can see, it does work. And although the charger is rated at 280 watts, it looks like it's not really pulling the full 280 watts. So maybe what I'll try is plugging in something else at the same time. Not sure what. I'll be right back. We'll try that. All right, guys, I'm back. And I've got a fan that's a 26-watt fan. Um, it is a Vornado V10. That's the model. Maybe what I'll do is I'll have the fan cool this off. So I am at 240 some odd watts. And the units is saying, you know, based off this load, you got about one hour of usage time, right? Now the battery shows 95%. All right, 95% on the battery. You can see that. And uh, yeah, one hour left based off the watts that it's pulling out. Okay. Now don't forget, this is a 200, a 300 watt. Okay. So now we're going to plug in the fan. It's 26 watts. So, so far, you know, we're going as high as 250 watts. So let's plug in the fan. I'm going to see if anything trips, anything like that. All right. If I can put the plug in the right way. Now, the fan's not on, so it shouldn't be pulling any power. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, and then I'm going to put it on the highest setting. All right, so far. All right, let's watch. I'm going to see if I can watch the panel while I turn the fan on. Well, you know what's funny is I put the fan on at the lowest, and that additional 26 watt tripped the unit. That's weird, huh? Well, everything's still plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if we can turn on the outlets. The fan turned on. The charger turned on. Let's see what happens. Now, I am going to put the fan on the highest level. Okay, it is. It is on the highest. Okay. So let's keep an eye. Fan is running. Battery's charging. And the unit tripped. Interesting. I mean, obviously, this is 280 watts, right? But it's not using the full 280. So I figured there was room to put in another 26 watts. But guys, there you go. There's one example. I'll record one or two more examples. And then later on, I'll show you how to charge this via solar. All right, guys. The next test is a TV. Now, this is a 50-inch flat-screen TV. And uh, everything else is plugged into outlets, so don't worry about that. Let's turn this on. There it goes. Let's go ahead and plug in the TV. Well, actually, let's turn on the outlet. All right. Plug in the TV. I don't think it'll show any power yet, but I'll go ahead and turn it on. All right. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to turn the TV on. Okay. And there goes the TV. It's on. So in this example, why would you connect a TV? TV is 147 watts. So uh, it's pulling, uh, you know, it adjusts, right? It's telling you three hours uh, based off of a little over 100 watts. But why would you do this? Uh, maybe you're going to use your phone to stream like Hulu or Netflix or something to your TV while you're waiting for your power and for your house to come up back on. Look, I think most people will use this to charge their cell phones and stuff like that. Maybe use a laptop for a little bit out and about. Um, you know, this is a $300 unit that sells for around 220 because of the coupons that are out there. Okay, but I'm getting about 108, 109 watts. All right, it says it's about two hours left based off of the battery's 93% charge. The next question is, will this power station work with a K-Supreme coffee maker, which is over 1,000 watts? Well, let's just try it. It can't hurt. Turn on the unit. Okay. Turn on our AC outlet. Let's go ahead and get our plug. 
And when you plug it in, nothing's going to happen because it doesn't really use any power unless you're turning it on. Okay, it's plugged in. You still see zero wattage. And now let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, now turning it on will do nothing. I'm going to open and close the lid. All right, close the lid and make believe like we're making coffee, right? The buttons are flashing. Again, uh, showing one watt. All right, let's go ahead, select number one, which is my favorite. I'm going to hit the K in a second, and let's see what happens. And I don't think it'll work. All right. Let's see. Not a chance. Too much wattage. Right, Brooklyn? Yep. All right, guys, I'm in a dark space here, and I want to show you the flashlight and how bright this is. Check it out. Look at that. I'm in the staircase, and uh, yeah, this thing's pretty darn bright. I mean, I'm not going to put it in your eyes, but it's not bad. Listen, it's an additional thing that you get when you get the GoLabs. So guys, this is really what this is about, right? This unit is really made for portable power, right? Take this out with you, go camping, stuff like that. You have a power outage. You know, you're talking about, you know, 300 watts. Um, so let's plug in the iPad. This is an iPad 12.9 inch. I'm going to plug it in to the 60 watt USB type C port. All right. That just showed it's charging. Okay. Let's plug in. Uh, Android phone. This is a uh, Moto G stylus. It's actually, uh, to my knowledge, one of the first Motorola's that came with a stylus. So let me plug this in. All right, there it goes. It lit up. It's showing it's charging. All right. Let's plug in an iPhone in uh, USB Type A on the here. All right. Let me put it in the right way. All right. There you go. Brooklyn came up. It's charging. And now let's plug in the uh, Nord 5G. That's the uh, N10 5G. So let's plug that in. And um, there you go. Guys, we are charging a 12.9 inch tablet. Three phones, one Android, two Apple. This unit is telling us it is using 46 watts. It has six hours of battery life left. Uh, not battery, yeah, six hours, basically five hours. So it's adjusting, as you can see. And uh, now 50 watts. So, yeah, it's charging all three of these. And this is, like I said, what it's made for. Okay, I want to put this in front of you. I, I won't be able to speak technically well because I'm still learning, but... This is important when you're choosing a battery pack, whether you want a lithium ion or a lithium ion phosphate, which is also known as that Life P04. I mean, look at the cycles. That's a big difference, okay? Look at the safety. You know, definitely it's safer. It's a safer battery. The costs are lower as well, okay? Charging does take more time, okay? Um, so very, very interesting information as we learn about the different types of lithium. Again, I will also have detailed specs and other information towards the end of the video, but here we go with the solar test. Let's get started with the solar test. All right, guys, we are doing a solar charging test with the GoLabs R300. It is currently receiving 54 watts from the sun at a 2% charge. Okay, I am running, I believe these are 20 foot um, MC4 cables. And there's my panel that I normally do for now until I get a better setup. But it is uh, facing the sun and receiving 54, 55 watts. It is now 7.10 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to go ahead and see how long it takes to fully charge that unit. I'm going to have to keep moving the panel also as the sun 
is up there and it will soon move this way <laughs> east to west so that's east it'll move west we'll see how it goes Brooklyn's out here of course eating junk already but uh, yeah you know this little this device is receiving power already all right again it's it's the two percent mark is not really uh, solid but it's receiving 55 watts so far from the panels keep in mind this can only take up to 60 watts but it has an MPPT controller uh, for solar and it actually will make sure it protects the unit because it's built in so when you think about me running a 100 watt panel on something that can only receive 60 watts don't forget you never get the full 100 watts so we'll see what happens I'm going to leave this out it's protected under the patio we'll see how this goes 28 minutes later and it's receiving 58 watts 58 watts of power it's at 10 percent already 58 watts of power all right an hour and 18 minutes later we are at uh, 58 watts uh, 25 percent charged i moved it out of the sun and that seems to actually help keep it cooler which i, I wasn't sure but yeah definitely it's it's cooler as it's charging 26 percent now 26 percent at uh, 58 watts an hour and uh, 18 minutes in all right we're two hours in it's now a little after uh, about 9 11 a.m and we got 58 volt uh, watts coming in at 39 percent all right not bad not bad again i continue to move the panel a little bit very little you know the sun is uh moved up to the right a little bit now so gotta just you know i think the tip here is to watch this shadow you see the shadow that really helps you when you're moving your panel. I mean, I've got this temporary setup. I'm gonna work on something better. All right, we are three hours in. We got 54%, so three hours, 54% charge, receiving 55 watts. Now, I do have some clouds, but for the most part, the sun is coming through. And I've moved the panel. And by the way, this is not getting hot which is really good so the sun sitting in the sun will make it hot um but yeah i'm just watching the shadow at this point and i've already moved it right it's the sun all right five hours and 10 minutes in it is now uh, 12 20 i think 53 watts even with the clouds so uh, the solar panel is doing well 88 percent charged 88 percent so uh, yeah i think by one o'clock this is supposed to be 100 percent, which makes sense i think they say six to seven hours to charge this via solar all right guys well it is 1 37 p.m and that means that this thing took about in uh six hours and and maybe almost a half six hours and a half i'll i'll calculate the numbers i'm off by a little bit to fully charge via solar is that cool or what you know i adjusted the panel throughout the day but yeah it says six to seven hours and look at that a little under six and a half hours and we were able to charge this with a hundred watt panel we will include that panel in our links in the description if you use our links you support our channel um, that is a good panel i've been using that sorry about the planes but planes have to fly all right, guys, I'm in the truck. I've got the power station. I'm going to go ahead and turn the vehicle on. All right, we're going to go ahead and plug in the car charger into the car charger <laughs> down here. All right, all the way in. Now let's go ahead and plug it into the unit and see what type of wattage we receive. Okay, it's plugged in. And uh, let's just give it a moment. All right, it's showing it's charging. 35 watts, 36 watts, 38 watts. 
All right, looks like it's, yeah, 38, 39 watts. Battery's already 90% charged, but I did want to show you how much wattage a average car charger will give this unit if you decide to charge it um, on the road. This is a truck, so not too bad. All right, guys, so we are going to try pass-through charging to see if it actually works. Now, I will tell you, I've always had a dream that this unit would support pass-through charging, but it doesn't. A lot of people are disappointed in that. And maybe in the future it will, who knows? But as of now, you cannot use the USB ports or the power ports when you're charging batteries on this unit. I've done a couple of reviews on this thing. It is really handy, to be honest with you. I will put a review right up in this corner if you want to check that out, okay? But in the meantime, let's go ahead and try pass-through charging. All right, now what I want to do is plug in the unit so it shows it's being charged. All right. There it goes. So I am receiving power. I'm at 90% receiving 46 watts. 45, 46. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and try. Let me turn on the AC outlets. I want to plug in this phone here, this Android phone here, to test if it will charge this phone. And the phone lit up immediately. So it is now being charged. Okay, so that's one. Okay, um, I want to plug in the iPhone, so I'm going to plug it into USB port. Okay, again, we want to watch the iPhone, it should light up. Boom, there it goes, that's being charged. And let's try another Android phone, plug this in and this should light up too. And there you go. I am now charging three devices while this unit is charging. What I'd like to do too now is, for some reason, uh, you know, I, I got the impression that you cannot charge using USB Type-C. So I'm gonna just unplug the power brick here guys all right because this has actually got an end which is a USB type C and I want to plug it in to this let's see the 60 watt all right now let me turn this phone off so at least it'll light up telling us that power is being received now this is an in and an out on the bottom by the way if you remember I'll unplug these cables for now guys just so you can see what was going on so the top one's 30 watts, the bottom one's 60 watts. I'm going to try the 30 watt first. All right, I'm getting passed through charging. Okay, that's good. And then this is an in and an out down here on the bottom. This will be a 60 watt in and out. Plug that in. And uh, let me just see something. So I think that's what they were saying. They were saying while you're charging the battery, the bottom port won't support um, out. Okay, all right, so you can use the 30 watt, and that'll work. So the 30 watt will work. The 60 watt, it does not support pass through. Okay, yeah, I noticed that. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Hey guys, listen, I just wanted to show you because I think a lot of people are very interested in pass-through charging. And here we go. There's a perfect example. So guys, really, not a bad little unit. You know, anywhere from $200 to $220 after coupon. And they usually give you that coupon a, a lot. So look out for it. I'll put a link in the description. But, you know... I'm going to include some slides towards the end of the video so you can kind of look at technical specifications and uh, really what makes this type of battery different from lithium, uh, the charging cycles, and really how much longer it lasts. 
as well. It's got advantages and disadvantages. I really like that they give you the solar uh, charging cables. They give you the car charger. They give you the house charger, which is really nice. You can use USB type A, USB type C uh, to charge this as well. You know, you can plug things directly into it. Um, and it even comes with a light, which isn't bad. So, uh, yeah, I hope you like the review. Any questions, let us know. Give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Brooklyn and I love thumbs up. It really helps our channel. And share the video if you think it's helpful. All right. Well, if you know our channel, we're all about details. So here are some specification sheets and other helpful information. Go ahead and pause if you want to look over any of these sheets. Hey guys, take a moment and give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. As you can see, Brooklyn, she's waving her tail for you. Take a moment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell and you'll get notified of new videos we come out with. Also, follow us and contact us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.